And today we're talking about perhaps the most important organ in the body, and that's the brain. It's my belief in my lab's evidence that if you reverse the age of the human brain, Alzheimer's and other diseases of the brain will go away and you'll even get your lost memories back again. we're living longer. We're not living better because the brain is still aging and getting these diseases, Alzheimer's and other types of dementia are becoming more prevalent because we're living longer, but not whole body, not holistically slowing down the aging process. There's a recent drug that was approved, but it barely works. It makes a minor difference. So we have to make a breakthrough. And what we're going to talk about today is a totally new approach to treating dementia. And that is boosting the body's defenses against not just Alzheimer's, but against aging itself. And it's my belief in my lab's evidence that if you reverse the age of the human brain, Alzheimer's and other diseases of the brain will go away and you'll even get your lost memories back again. But that also, that it's not just about Alzheimer's today. We're talking about other things that happen in the brain. We're talking about molecular changes that make cells forget what type of cell they are. So nerve cells become more like skin cells. And there's another process that's important during aging that we'll touch upon, and particularly about its reversibility, and that's loss of blood flow. There's a practical and an evolutionary explanation for those. The practical one is that our brain is protected. There's a blood-brain barrier that doesn't get hit by UV light like our skin does. But our brain needs to be protected from these toxins that are in the environment and of course um, anything that leads to brain aging but of course our brains will still age um, DNA breaks we've talked about broken chromosomes accelerate that clock and this happens naturally even to cells that don't divide including neurons the nerve cells in our brain unlike the liver you can cut a piece out it grows back the brain doesn't easily do that there's a little neurogenesis as we call it but mostly those nerve cells are going to be there for your whole life and so they have these super protective mechanisms these adversity systems that keep the brain younger for longer but they're, they're not perfect of course we do have an aging brain but there are ways to turn on those defenses greater than they naturally would be activated as we've said in earlier episodes by working on aging we can keep the whole body young including the brain which is really what we want to do if we want to have maximal gains in longevity and health and mental capacity right up to the end. So Omega-3s actually form a structural component of the brain. They insert along with other fats in, in the brain. So fat is actually good for the brain. A lot of our brain is made up of these fats. The reason is that the nerves aren't naked, much like an electrical wire. You don't have them lying around your house naked. They actually be wrapped with insulation tape or insulation, insulating material. And that's what these fats do. And these are membranes that wrap around. It's called the myelin sheath. And these fats actually, some of them are omega-3s. And the more omega-3s you have in your diet, the more you'll have in those membranes. And that protects from inflammation and damage and helps the nerves function and repair if they get damaged. But if you do aerobic exercise or even just walk, that'll improve your chances of having a better memory and cognition as you get older. The reason we think that is, is that there's two reasons. One is better blood flow and also better neuronal activity and slowing aging of those cells. That involves the sirtuins, this third protective survival pathway that can be activated, of course, by this the food and also by exercise. There's another study, it doesn't have to include aerobic exercise. There's one where there's strength exercise. So if you don't like running, pick up some weights because what's been found in this study, this is 2013, Pereira and colleagues found that in an elderly cohort, they had 451 people, just 10 weeks of strength training increased the level of factors that grow new brain cells new nerves. This marker is called BDNF or brain derived neurotrophic factor. And we use that as a way of indicating the youthfulness of the brain and regrowth of new nerve cells. The AMPK pathway talks to the NAD sirtuin pathway. When you take metformin and you get this mitochondrial hormesis, mitohormesis, that will raise NAD levels. It'll stimulate the production of the enzyme that turns NMN, a precursor of NAD, into NAD itself and raise NAD levels and get the sirtuins active as well in the brain. Why would you want to supplement NAD in the first place? Well, it's known just like the rest of the body that in the brain, NAD levels go down for a couple of main reasons. One is that we don't make as much that NAMPT enzyme that's activated by metformin and exercise goes down. So you don't make as much, but also it was shown by Jeffrey Milbrandt at Washington University in a couple of high profile papers just in the last few years that there's an enzyme that gets turned on in nerve cells when they're damaged called SARM1 and it depletes the cell rapidly of NAD. So what you've got is a decrease in the production of NAD also with an increase in the degradation of NAD. So supplementation we think is important to not just get the youthful levels back but go beyond that to mimic exercise and mimicking a perfect, perfect diet especially for the elderly who cannot always do those things. It's super important that we look after our brains. It's not just about ourselves, it's about our families. Uh, many families have had to take care of parents and grandparents that have dementia. This is not pleasant for anybody. And we have a, a responsibility to society and particularly our family members to stay healthy for longer, particularly keeping our brains younger for longer. So 
Brain aging is really interesting because it's it's one of the few organs that we absolutely, absolutely cannot do without if we want quality of, of life. And the problem with medicine today is that we treat the heart, we treat kidneys, we know how to treat a lot of organs that are below the neck. But above the neck, we've been very poor at be, being able to preserve the age of the, the youthfulness of the brain. And what we're ending up in society, uh, and many of our family members uh, end up this way as well, and it's totally tragic, is that the heart keeps beating, but the brain declines around the age of 70 and by the 80s and certainly 90s there's a lot of dementia alzheimer's is a type of dementia uh, and what we want to do today is to talk about ways uh, when you're young middle-aged and even elderly and older to preserve the function of your brain and even improve the function of your brain if you started to lose some of that function but the yeah. brain is actually can be preserved it, it actually can age quite slowly it's not like the ovaries in females where that's the, a very fast aging process um, the brain actually ages quite slowly relative to other organs and it's partly because it's protected from toxins it's got a special blood brain barrier that protects mm. it it also has very good defense mechanisms but it's not perfect and it's actually susceptible to damage because those cells typically don't divide in your brain and you're right. stuck with the ones that you have when you're born so you have to protect them because it's very hard to fix them though we are working on that and i think our next live we're going to cover that part of it uh to, yeah. in terms of brain age reversal and reprogramming mm -hmm. but before that technology is ready let's just talk about things that we could do today uh, we'll talk about those things that we can implement today to slow down the aging of the brain. And what we're talking about, that we want to take supplements that protect the DNA. Mm -hmm. So you don't want a lot of free radical damage. You don't want broken chromosomes. And we also want to boost the repair system so that the cell right. can send in proteins to join those chromosomes back together very quickly. And, mm -hmm. and that's really what we're talking about. And the mitochondria are key to that, that one of the most important parts of a nerve cell are the mitochondria. We have thousands in each cell. And in the brain and in muscle, they're really important because it, our, our nerve cells need a lot of energy to work. Mm -hmm. and and over time, as you get older, those mitochondria are less active and you start to get brain fog and your nerve cells don't work, work, work as well. And eventually they lose their, their identity. And so some of the supplements that I take, the first one we can talk about is metformin, which we've yes. talked about before. Metformin is a, is a drug to treat type 2 diabetes and lower blood sugar. And the way it works is it inhibits what's called complex one. It's a, it's a group of proteins involved in energy production and it stops them from working efficiently. And mm -hmm. in response, the cell says, oh my goodness, I don't have enough energy. I'm going to make more mitochondria. So mitochondria, you can think of as little yeah. battery packs. So the these little oh. battery packs are also seen as you can think of them as bacteria they used to be bacteria that swam around outside our cells and then we merged them about four billion years ago and mm -hmm. what we try to do is we with metformin we inhibit them a little bit so that they multiply to compensate and so metformin will boost the amount of mitochondria the number of mitochondria in your cells and mm -hmm. has been shown to improve memory in uh, in elderly people now the other supplement that i take every day is coq10 which is also part of this electron transport chain and the levels decline with age but they also decline when you take certain drugs. Um, in my case, I take a statin, a torvastatin for my cholesterol, familial, it's a family issue. And, uh, and CoQ10 is very important. And CoQ10 has been shown to be important for staving off diseases like depression. Mm -hmm. um, and that tends to happen increasingly as you get older. And mm -hmm. so supplementing that is important for cell function and for mental health about magnesium. I take it at night uh, these days to help me with my sleep. Mm -hmm. um, and so speaking of sleep, um, there are things we can do to take sleep. Maybe we'll, we'll leave that for later when we get to the sleep section. But um, magnesium mm -hmm. is, is really important. I take NMN for my brain because we've shown in yes. animals that it improves blood flow, not just in muscles to make mice run further, but also prevents dementia. It can actually mm -hmm. reverse dementia in mice. Mm -hmm. And um, it's called vascular dementia. So if you ever have uh, grandparents or even great parents, great, great grandparents that lose their memory, a lot of that is due to lack of blood flow in the brain. It's like mm -hmm. cardiovascular disease in the brain. And NMN in mice fixes that. The blood flow mm -hmm. improves. And so I'm taking NMN every day in part, not just because we think it's important for slowing aging and maintaining that structure of the DNA and helping repair the DNA, but also because it opens up and makes new blood vessels in the brain.